Wisdom for Creativity, Part 1. There is the last day in the month of August, that through the month of wonders of wisdom. You will live here as a wonder to your world. Amen. The best of this month will be coming your way today. Amen. Life without wisdom can be very frustrating. To live without wisdom is to live in frustration. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. God's word declares wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom with all that get and get understanding. God said it is the principal thing. It is foolishness not to have wisdom. Everything of worth in the kingdom of God has its root in wisdom. Wisdom is the distinguishing factor that makes our life meaningful, colorful, and full of results. Every man you see with outstanding results operating in the wisdom of God. Power without wisdom, you still be stupid. I operate in power, you know this is a power church. But many people who operate in power have ended up without no results because they lack wisdom. What will sustain the results of power is wisdom. Is what? Wisdom. It says it's a principal thing. It's a principal subject. If you fail it, you, you don't have a carryover, you repeat. If you are not celebrating landmark results in your life, then check your wisdom level. What is wisdom? Wisdom is laying hold and apply God's ways and approach to every issue of life. Wisdom is assessing and practicing scriptural laid standards in all areas of life in order to gain maximum results. It is following divine principles to have uncommon results. That's wisdom. That is what? Wisdom. Wisdom is not common sense. Wisdom is scriptural sense. It is the ability to know what to do in every aspect of life. That's wisdom. Now here it is, the life of a Christian without wisdom can be likened to a man standing at the door and behind the door is all your inheritance, but you don't have the key to the door. You know, it's useless. That's how wisdom is. If a man, for instance, has everything he wants in life, they say, look, this room has everything you want. And you're standing in front of the room and there's no key. But you know that everything you're looking for is inside the room. How good is that door to you? It's useless. That's how... When you don't have wisdom, everything you are supposed to enjoy in life is available, but the key to them is not there. Wisdom is the principal thing. So it's the key to your inheritance. It unlocks the doors of life. So wisdom is the divine key to assess all the good things and treasures of life. Now if you look at James 3, 15 and 17, there are four kinds of wisdom. Four kinds of what? Wisdom from there. He said, the wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sexual, devilish. Earthly, sensual, and what? Devilish. But the wisdom that is from above, first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to entreat it, full of mercy and of good fruits. Of what? Take note of good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Earthly wisdom is what we call common sense. The sensual or intellectual wisdom is the way you go to formal or informal training, you go to school for it. Diabolical or devilish wisdom is the one that is from the occult world. Wizards and witches operate with that. The divine wisdom is the wisdom that is from God. That's what we're talking about. John 3, 31 says that wisdom from above is above all. Divine wisdom is superior to all kinds of wisdom. Let me show you something in James 3, verse 17. Look at what the Bible says here. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, and underline the word good fruits. On what? That word good fruits is where I want to dwell on. One of the characteristics of divine wisdom is good fruits. Good fruits in the Bible here is not talking about oranges and mangoes. No, that's not what God is talking about. It's talking about good works, 
innovations, and creativity. That's what good fruits mean. He said this kind of wisdom is innovative. It is creative. That's what the Bible is talking about. It produces results that everybody can see. Now, hear this truth. Christianity is not a call to mediocrity. No, sir. You are not born again to be stupid again. You are born again to reign again. Because he said he has called us out of darkness to a marvelous light. So Christianity is not synonymous with stupidity. No. Stupidity is not Christianity. The only wise God could have given back to stupid children. If it's the only wise God, then you are also supposed to be the only wise child. And that shall be your testimony. Amen. Let that amen be with testimony. Amen. Now hear this. Don't make Christianity look like a mockery in the eyes of the world. We are not born again to have a suspended brain. It's unscriptural. Let me hear that. For a child of God to be amongst failures. You can be a failure as a sinner, but not when you come into Christ. Because you can't have the mind of Christ that created all things. First Corinthians 2 verse 16. He said we have the mind of who? You can't have that mind and not have a creative life. The mind of Christ is the mind that created all things. All things were made by him. Without him that was not made, that was made. John chapter 1 verse 3. Now you can't have that mind and be stranded in life. You can't have the creator's mind and be a dummy on the earth. No. You can be a dummy before you are born again. But not as a born again. No. At born again, your mind was, there was a mind transplant. So you are supposed to be creative. And from this day, the creative force of God in you will begin to be on display. Amen. So our minds have all it takes to produce good works. Your mind should produce remarkable, admirable results wherever you are found. You hear me? You are regenerated. You are what? And you carry a generated... No, listen. The mind of the living God is what you carry. <laughs> Say, I'm not ordinary. Say, like a child of God, I possess a supernatural mind. You cannot possess this mind and fail in life. The mind that the whole world is created by that mind, no, you are supposed to be a co creator. Now, hear what God said in Colossians 1, I will read 15 and 16. He said, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Verse 16. For by him we are all things what? By him we are all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things we are created by him and for him. And we are carrying that same mind in us. So we are supposed to create. Wait, listen, listen. We are who is in the image. Do you hear that? Who is the image? So we are in the image of God. So if we are in the image of God, then we should produce results like him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Get angry with failure. Get angry with failure. So you are created to create. He said, male and female created he them. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. This is the truth. Both men and women we are in the image of God. You agree with me? Oh, grace, yeah, that no woman is inferior to any man. And no man is superior to any woman. We are all in the image of God. We have the same mind. There's no less mind. Listen carefully. Stop looking down on yourself. And creativity is the heritage of the children of God. Then what is creativity? What is what? Creativity is the, having the ability of using your mind to develop new and original ideas. Having what? The ability of using your mind to develop new and original ideas. It is engaging your mind in productive thinking to establish things that were not in existence before. Creativity is simply breaking away from traditions. From what? Norms and study school to explore virgin realms of getting amazing results. Creativity is seeing, doing, 
and thinking differently from how every other one thinks. It is the ability to operate as a pace setter in all lives in therefore. That's creativity. That is creativity. Now, if you look at Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 12, it said, I wisdom, I what? Dwell with prudence and find that knowledge of witty inventions. I, wisdom, that is where creativity inventions come from. Creativity is becoming a solution to problems through your mental evolution. A renowned neurosurgeon called Dr. Ben Carson said each time he carries out surgical operations, he sees something moving his hand, teaching him skills. Teaching you skills by the hand of God is beyond intellectualism. Intellectualism has to do with information stored in your brain. When you read and keep, you go to medical school and you drop something in your brain and then you, somebody comes to you with a problem, you begin to, it's okay, I was taught this. That is intellectualism. When we talk about supernatural creativity, it is the Holy Ghost sharing your mind with your hands to produce results. Which is beyond what you are taught in school. But Cassie said, he draws his inspiration from the Holy Ghost. That connects him with the hands and the mind together. David made a statement, and David was the best person who made that statement in Psalm 18, verse 34. Hear what David said. He said, he teaches my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by my hands. He teaches. That is not ordinary. He said, God teaches me to war. It is not something I went down for an instructor to teach me. I got this inspiration super naturally. And in Psalm 144 verse 1, Bless me the Lord my strength, who teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. He gives me supernatural skill beyond what any instructor can give to me. That's what I talk about creativity. Where you, you do things which are not conventional. May that grace come upon you right now. Amen. Let your amen be strong. Now hear this. Consciously unleash your creativity. Wisdom for creativity. What about wisdom for creativity? Hear this. What is wisdom for creativity? It's divine wisdom working in your mind. Divine what? Working in your mind to be able to break old records. To set new ones. I said, wisdom for creativity is simply divine wisdom working in your mind to be able to break old records to set what? New ones. Fashion out new order of things that has never existed before. I'm not teaching theory. I'm a doer of what I'm teaching. I'm very creative. Listen, in the history of church growth, this is my own area. If you don't have a testimony, don't teach in the history of church growth from the time Jesus came to today, I'm the first on earth to start from one branch, 40 branches, one day, five services. Never in the history of church growth. That's creativity. That's what? You don't do conventional things. You do things on... It has never happened in the history of church from one branch. From what? Listen, people can open 1,000 branches. But never in the history of church where somebody from one branch Open 14 branches with five services the same day. I was the first. Pastor Matthew said, David, write down what God has done with you in a book because it has never happened in the history of church growth. That's what I mean by creativity. You don't do conventional things. You come out of the box to do something unconventional. May the grace rest upon you now. That's why we are being creative. You are innovative. Something existing, you go out of the box to do a different thing out of it. Are you getting upset now? People have been doing church growth, but I came from out of the box. You can, now, nah, this church can open 1,000 branches now. We are beginning to spread. That's not what I mean. We had only one branch plus 17. Plus what? That was one branch. Then we opened 14 branches the same day with five services all. It has never happened. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? That's what I mean by creativity. You are doing a common thing in an unconventional way. Coming out of the box. You're taking your world by storm. That grace will rest upon you right now. Amen. Creativity makes you limitless. Makes you what? It makes you a failure proof. It keeps you succeeding. You know what thing? When you are creative, your mind will always be producing new ideas. New inventions. New things. Name them. To keep you afloat and relevant no matter the time you are in. Creative people are never stranded. Let me tell you this. <laughs> La brosica telecadabra. Tell your neighbor, unleash your creativity. Unleash Say it one more time. Unleash I'll tell you very simple things you do if you want to unleash. Before I go further to give examples in the Bible. If you want to unleash your creativity, there are things you need to do as a child of God. Now, number one is that change your way of doing things. Change your what? <laughs> change your way of doing things. Read widely. Read what? Don't read from just one box. Read widely. Number two, think creatively. Think what? That is, be open to fresh ideas. Be open to what? Don't put yourself in a box and say, I, 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 I know. Be open to fresh ideas. That's where you unleash your creativity. Be open to fresh ideas. Don't just put yourself, you know, this thing can't change, you know, it can't work. Be open to fresh ideas. Be open to fresh ideas. Don't think that you know it all. There are people who never accept new things in their life, no matter how you tell them. They have just fixed. No, 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 this can't work. Can't work. No, I can't work. No, 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 forget it. No, 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 don't say that. It can't work. You can never be creative. Three, prepare properly. Prepare what? Prepare properly. Forget relevant information. That's fast. Get relevant what? Because without information, there's no way you can be creative. Analyze the facts. Take time to analyze the facts. Be a multidimensional thinker. Five, evaluate different options. Evaluate what? Creative people don't get stuck. They evaluate different options. There's always an option for anything. And then they go for the best. <laughs> and that's how creative people. The, if you want creative architects, they can say, what do you have? You say, two million, they say, I'm going to give you a very fine house with two million. You say, you have two billion, they'll give you a house of two billion. But a non-creative architect is only what he has studied in school. He says, this is how. You have to import it from here. You have to import it. If you say, no, 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 I don't have such money. He says, okay, not away. You can't build. Because it's not cre a creative man will look at you and say, okay, you have five million, hold it. I'm coming. He will also produce something he will produce for five billion with a small one as if said and with excellence. The design will be the same, but the material may not be the same. But if you come in, you find that this man is very creative. But the man who is not creative, he will only buy the expensive things. Outside the expensive things, nothing. But a creative architect can tell you, okay, hold on. I'm going to build a very fine house. Bring that money. Because after the block work, he will know how to use a simple material to make a fine work. But a non-creative man will only tell you, you know, you have to import this one, you have to import this one. Any time an architect says all your house is importation, it's not creative. It's not. No creative actors tells you only importation. He will use what is available to give you the best. Create. Now, have you not seen people who use 2,000 wrapper and sew a cloth for you that everybody say, ah, this cloth is fine. And have you not seen people who use 200,000 wrapper and sew nonsense? Creative people use what is available to give you the best. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They evaluate the different options and come out with the best. 
Don't always say, if it's not expensive. No, no, no. There are people, if it's not expensive, I have even children. Who, if it's not expensive, I'll be laughing. I'll be laughing. I say, no. I'm, I'm a leader, so I know the options. It's not always the expensive thing that is the best. No, no. I've seen things very expensive and they're not the best. Not always. Not always. I'm, I'm a very deep thinker. Most times, expensive things are not the best. That something is costly, that something is the best. Of recent, I, I said a new thing. I just said a new thing. I said, I'm not going to buy any designer. You know why? If I wear any shoe now, you won't know the price. <laughs> Even if I wear a shoe of $100, you won't know the price. As long as it fits me. <laughs> because once there's people who have made names, even when the new ones are coming and it's superior, nobody wants to buy They say, no, they don't have a name yet. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> I, uh, when the ones who have made names, they put any price, you buy it. And even when something is very fine, you don't buy it because you feel that it's what has made the name. No, it's not so. Glory to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? One day I wore a $5 tie and everyone said this tie is fine. Then I not told her the price. I did it on purpose. And not even you knew in church. It was good and I did it on purpose. It was $5. And I said I want to wear this tie to make people know that this is not what I... And that it was $5. Said, this tie is fine. I said, you know how much is this tie? $5. And I intentionally wore it to make you know that it's not necessary when I wear the five hundred dollar ties. That is fine. Fine man is a fine man, whether I want dollar or not. <laughs> okay. Can we go now? Glory to God. Tell your neighbor you just have to be creative. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you examples, some examples of creative people in the Bible. Some what? Examples of creative people in the Bible and also in our contemporary society. So our days now also. I'll give you some examples in the Bible days and also in our days. First example is Abraham. Is who? Abraham was frustrated with no future aside up to the age of 75. I'm going to tell you creativity about Abraham. But Abraham mysteriously encountered the wise God, the only wise God. Abraham got into agricultural business, specifically animal husbandry, but he was so creative, was so what? Creative in his business and he blossomed and prospered. But where I'm going to tell you is that if you read Abraham's story in Genesis chapter 21, 25, he was the first man to discover water beneath the earth. Is that true, sir? But there's something about creativity. Do you know before Abraham left his father's house, that was the business they were doing? I come again. This is, this is. Abraham was already in the animal business in his father's house. But there was no creativity. There was no what? His father was a pagan in the present Iraq. Abraham came from the present Iraq. That was where he originally came from. Before God moved him to Israel. Now, he was already in the animal business in Iraq. But there was no creativity until he met God. Now, when he got to meet God, creativity came in, in Abraham's life. Abraham, after paying tithe, I'll go to that in the second service, discovered that, look, you can get water from beneath the earth. So Abraham transformed the normal thing he was doing and added creativity and blossomed. So if you were a businessman as a sinner, you come into Christ, there's no change. Watch it. You cannot be selling the same store the way you are selling as an unbeliever. Abraham did not change business, but he changed his style. He was doing the same business, but this time he added creativity to the business. Do you understand where I'm going? So that you are a clearing agent as an unbeliever, you shouldn't do it the same way as a child of God. There should be some innovations. There should be some to show that you are not, is not the same person. So here. Now, 
Many Christians are frustrated in business career and other legitimate life endeavors because they don't go for the creative dimension in business. In Job chapter 32 verse 8, I'll read the Good News translation. He said, but it is the spirit of Almighty God that comes to us and gives us wisdom. Do you hear that? May that come upon you right now. Amen. Your story will change right as I'm speaking in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another man is called Joseph. Called who? Joseph in the Bible. Joseph moved from prison to become a prime minister in a strange land through creativity. Through what? Now, when you ask most people, they think that it was dream that moved Joseph. It was not dream, please. <laughs> if it was dream, he wouldn't have been a prime minister. Because dream would have made him the head of the magicians. It was not dream that made Joseph a prime minister. No. No. Read your Bible. Pharaoh never made me a prime minister because of dream. He made me a prime minister because of creativity. Pharaoh made a statement in Genesis chapter 41, 39 to 40. Look at this verse carefully. He said, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You are so wise and discreet. You are creative. Not because you interpret dream. He was able to see the dream and he provided solution on how they can preserve food. Is that through? For the period of drought, for the period of famine. And Pharaoh said, wow, wow, we don't have this type in Egypt. Take over this nation. Someone after today's service will take over where you are. Yeah. He said, there's no one as discreet and wise as thou art. That was why he ascended the throne without sweat. He had creative wisdom that turned his life. In the midst of telling this where you're hearing this message from, you will take over in the name of Jesus. Amen. It was creativity that made Joseph. It was what? That made Joseph. There's a man called George Washington Calver. Affectionately known as the plant doctor. As I was known. His curiosity and faith in God are his key components in becoming an inventor. He was an inventor. As somebody was very enthusiastic as a scientist, he said once, he said, he asked God to tell him the secrets of the universe. That was what he told God. He said, God, tell me the secret of... But instead, God pointed him to something much smaller, the peanut. You know, God has a way. When you're very creative, anything can mean something to you. The secrets Calvert discovered led to the invention of hundreds of new discoveries, including peanut butter, cosmetics, paint, Oil, marble, plywood, and even the dye used in crayons, uh, crayons. All came from just one direction from God. All his inventions, Calvin humbly attributed them to God. The master creator, having often said, he said this, I quote him, The Lord has guided me, and without my Savior, I am nothing. Unquote. Stop allowing your mind to lie fallow. Engage your brain to work out solutions for you to have a colorful destiny. E.W. Kenyon said, and I quote him, make your brain work. It will sweat, but make it work. Then it will improve. It will develop until you become the envy of those, all those around you, unquote. Tax this brain. Tax what? May the Holy Spirit move in your mental system to impact creativity, the nature of God in you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mary Hunter, an award-winning chef, tells the New York Times that all her recipes are divinely inspired. She told them, I don't have a cookbook. God gives me my own. Prayer is where I get 99% of my recipes. That's what she said. One day God gave her out of the box idea. The marinating stick. Most of you who go to major restaurants, you know it. It looks like a wild chopstick with holes. You insert your spices and herbs into this wild chopstick 
and then the salt is sticking into the meat. While the meat is cooking, the natural juice of the meat helps infuse the herbs and spices throughout giving your meat a full, robust flavor. And if, you, if you Google, you see a picture of the Mary, Mary Hunter's magnetic stick. Just Google it, you see it. Tell your sister, stop counting yourself out. Tell that lady by your side. When it comes to creativity, there are women who have taken their world by storm like Mary Hunters. Don't, even if you're cooking, any can cook. Add creativity to it. I often said to people, man's brain is not different from woman's brain. So don't look down on yourself. Enough of mediocrity. It's time to take the world by your storm. Where are the Deborahs and where are the Esthers? Arise and use your creative mind to provide solutions. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. There's a man called Gary Starkweather. Gary Starkweather, he happens to be the inventor of the laser printer. Encourage these believers, these are believers I'm using, I try to not to use unbelievers. I encourage these believers to think biblically about their work. As an engineer and inventor, he has worked with some leading technology companies like Apple. He has worked with Apple, he has worked with Microsoft, he has worked with Xerox, this man. He credits his success of his inventions to the guidance and inspiration of God. And with better understanding of our teachings, you should know that the Holy Ghost can give inspiration. And when he gives inspiration, you are bound to be creative. Is that true, sir? I'll go further to that. Hear what Gary Stockweather once said. I believe that to a great extent, the creativity we possess is because the creator puts it there. Unquote. God put things, I'll, I'll quote him again, say, God put things in us as tool developers and creative individuals and I think it has to please him when he sees us use those faculties to make something completely new. Unquote. All he's trying to say is, Everything God put you here is not for waste. And if you don't use them, God is disappointed. He rejoices when he sees you using the things he put in you. That's what he's trying to say. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So God wants you to use what is here to benefit humanity. So I hear. I think a lot. Wisdom is one of my greatest secrets of success. I'm very creative. I wasn't like this. So I'm very creative. If I sit like this, I look. You all know my stories. I've said them over and over. You know how the professionals, I give them an idea about the greater project. Is that true? I've shared it here where I called the structural engineers and the architects and they got stuck and I said, give me time. And I came back with a creative idea that all of them said, wow, this is strange. I've shared it over and over here where I came with creativity, where pillars were everywhere. I've never read architecture, never read civil engineering, but creativity has nothing to do with what you read. You all know how Niger Drada crisis was beyond federal government, and I gave them an idea. May the grace of creativity rest on you now. Amen. You have heard the stories of people like Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein. The next thing we hear about is you. Amen. The next the world we hear about is you. Amen. The world we hear about you in the name of Jesus. He would say, but there's a spirit in men and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Job 32 verse 8. I place a demand on heaven for your sake, I declare. You are living this service impacted with creative ideas. Amen. Those who saw you before this service, they will not be able to recognize you. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. the wisdom for creativity will move you from the back to the front. Amen. The louder your amen, you have a testimony. In the name of Jesus. How to steer creativity? Because that's where I really want to go. How to steer what? At least I'll be able to take one or two here. There are ten ways I'm going to share with you. So I don't want to just leave all in the second service. How can I steer what? Creativity. Because creativity is not dumb. and not just jump on you. You have to steer it up. And I want to show you how you can steer up creativity. How to steer creativity? You don't just wait for creativity, you can steer creativity. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And that's where I'm going. Number one, 
Link up with the Holy Spirit. Link up with who? If you want to steer credibility, link up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the personality with us today that is behind creativity. In Psalm 104, verse 30, Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. Do you hear that? Thou renewest the face of the earth. Thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created. So the spirit of God is behind every creation. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 10 and 11. For God I revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Say the spirit of man as him. Even so the things of God knoweth not man, but the spirit of God. Consult the Holy Spirit for solutions. Things internet cannot offer, the Holy Spirit will reveal them to you. There is solution to every challenge, including that challenge before you. There is solution to turn your life and destiny around for outstanding results. Go to him and ask him, what is, do I need to do concerning this situation in my life? are here. And this day, hey, as you seek his help, answer is coming to you now. <laughs> if you don't consult the Holy Spirit, you may end as a conductor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Say, go to him. Go to who? I consult him. When things are going across the road, I just go to him. And I pause. In five minutes, he gives me the answer. He's going to answer someone as I'm speaking right now. Yeah. Consult him. Tell him about consult him. Consulting. We consult human consultants without consulting the first chief who? Before you consult the human consultants, consult the chief consultant. He is the Holy Spirit. When he has given you the answer, then you can now go to the human for execution. But without his guidance, you may make a mistake. Now he has told me, then I call him and say, call the people who did that road. That's the human part now. Do you understand where I'm coming from? A leader who does not go by the kind of the Holy Spirit will be a blind man leading people. Because the people you are leading can talk, dribble you upside down. Okay. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13. Woo! For it is God who walks in you, both the will and the two of his good flesh. It's God who walks in you. So I hear. Hmm. Number two. Are you blessed, sir? Number two, think inventive thoughts. All inventors are great thinkers. No man reigns without the brain. Wise man said. Don't stop thinking that success in life is a game of chance. Nothing new emerges from nothing. They are taught first before they come into reality. New designs of clothes, new equipment to make life comfortable are all people's brainchild. Architects first finish the building in their mind before they draw it on the paper. Is that true? Behold, I make all things new. Is that true? In Isaiah 43, verse 19. Now shall it spring forth, I shall not know it. I will make a way in the will of the rivers in the desert. And without your mind, I can do nothing. Philemon chapter 1, verse 14. God is still doing new things with those who will agree to think as inventors. Be a thinker. Be a what? Think inventive thoughts. Sit down like this and move your brain. Wow. 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 Multidimensionally, there was always an answer. 
<laughs> Think deep. Think what? Deep. I was walking with a young man in London, and as we were walking, and I just turned and I said, Look at this thing. He looked at it. I said, Do you know this money? He was shocked. I said, This money. Because I saw our society, and I said, This money in Nigeria, in Port Harcourt in particular. He was, I would look and say, Go and find out how much it costs, and then you'll make money now in Port Harcourt straight. Yet everybody was passing there. I see things in everything. If aunt is moving, I look at the aunt. Why is he moving like that? Creative people ask questions. Very, very. That, that was why Solomon was looking for the cup where he looked at the, he looked at how spider could enter the palace. How did he enter the palace and then made the cup? He made story out of it. Yeah, I think everything. I, the, what people see, I don't know. Me, I look. Oh. I said, why? Why is it that women admire men who joke? Why? That means if a man is a joking man, his company will move better. That's right. Check any man who is very funny. Women like them. <laughs> I think a lot. Uh, women like to stay around people who like to make fun. So if a man has business and he has good charisma, his business will patronize. Not don't use the negative, use the positive. That means if a man likes to frown, no woman will patronize him. And women are the highest business women. They are market more than men. That's why the, the woman in Samaria took the thing to the village. No, no man. Jesus didn't meet any man who took the village. It was the woman who took the gospel to the village, straight. Because of how Jesus was. He said, you see, you're a woman. You have had five husbands. He said, wow, this man has told me everything. Samaria, come and see him. <laughs> women are the highest marketers. Check. That, have you seen where they use men as marketing agents? <laughs> Even in business, they don't use men for marketing. Check it out. They use women. Because it's their nature. They market well. It's their nature. The, the gospel of Jesus was marketed by women more than men. Who told the story of his resurrection? Woman. Who told the story of the well to the Samaria? Woman. Check anything that happens, women will go to market and say, come yow, yow. <laughs> Men talk stories, women market. <laughs> so, in wisdom, if you want your business to sell, don't play with the women. If you play with them, you're in trouble. That's a good marketer. That, that's wisdom. That's what? Wisdom is everything you see, you read, you read. Not negative, read. Why, why is this here? Ask questions. Amen. Tell them about be a thinker. Be a thinker. If you don't think, you can't be thick. Oh. But three, be innovative. Do what? Don't allow anything you meet remain the same way. Even when they are judged the best. Anything you meet, improve on it. I have said this before. That any knowledge not improved upon will soon become obsolete. If you meet anything, improve on it. Even in your office, don't meet an assignment and then the assignment remains the same. Improve on the assignment. That means take the already existing innovation forward and make it better. Two people cut my hair. I've been using one for years since I started. And one young man just joined me. He learned from the other one. But when he cuts my hair now, I sleep. I relax. This new one, every day cuts my hair, I must do. He cuts my hair in a very relaxed mood. That will cost my hair, I will be awake till he finishes. <laughs> they are doing the same thing. 
one improve. And I watch him learn from the old one, but when this one calls, he makes the thing so relaxed that I sleep. I must, there's no day cause my head I will not sleep. So even when I do that one is this one I know before, I keep calling this other one to keep coming back. I said, well, come on. Even when that one is around, I said, don't worry. Then this one cut my hair. <laughs> I better dash you money than to give myself stress. Never meet an assignment and don't improve on it. In Haggai chapter 2 verse 9, it said, the glory of this later house shall be greater than the former. Do you hear that? <laughs> the glory has to be greater than the former. Say the Lord of hosts, in this place will I give peace, say the Lord of hosts. The part of the just is as a shining Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18. We are in a dynamic world. We refuse to be static. We know it. Electronics changes every day. If you watch electronics changes, is that true? If you watch even cars, they keep changing. They keep what? If you meet a, a Honda, last year they tried to put a new thing to the Honda. The next day the Toyota will put a new thing. They keep changing, they keep changing. And as they keep changing, money also keep changing. You cannot afford to rest and be satisfied with your last achievement. Let me close on this note. You cannot be creative except you are innovative. Except you are what? And it cannot be innovative and not be productive. And productivity produces outstanding success. You cannot be creative except you are innovative. And you cannot be innovative and not be productive. And you cannot be productive and not be outstandingly successful. So here. Think and approach things differently. Think and do what? Think and approach things differently. Never meet an assignment without improving on it. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. You are going to pray. In Job 32 and verse 8, but there's a spirit in man and the spirit of the Almighty given a what? You are going to put your right hand on your forehead and pray this way. You say, dear Holy Spirit, move strongly in my mental system with divine inspiration for the supernatural release and flow of creative ideas to dissolve mysteries and solve every human problem in my life and the world around me. Beginning from today, Holy Spirit, I pray that from this moment, let it start. Now pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Put your hand there and pray for the creative idea of the Holy Ghost. Pray sincerely for yourself. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Le siri kato pra kakasoko tale kande bregezi yakata. Meturi aleze la kopra kaseko tale kende bre yakata. Mesuse kutale kato bregesi katele kada. E siri faro bregesi yakatala kando. Inde risese kitale kato. Inde risa saka kapra pra koko saka tele kando bregi yakata. Zezekitalo katebre gesi ya katale ya. Mire se si katobra kaseko tale kando bregesi ya katale. Miseru katole kande bregesi katele kando bregesi ya katale. Eziri alojaza metura kota. In the name of Jesus. Receive a flood of creative ideas in every area in the name of Jesus. You will not miss your divine visitation Amen. from heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. 